Hey, it's your friend Choice CJ here, and I am so excited, guys. I am so excited. Uh, not necessarily just for this video in particular, um, but I'm finally recording on Steam. So for the longest time, I had to use the iPhone to record this footage because the Steam version wasn't available, but I think it was November 17th. They went ahead and made that uh, available on Steam, and so now here we are. We're on the computer, and uh, we don't have to struggle with that anymore. And so everything's taken care of, just with OBS and whatever, and uh, that's really awesome and exciting. So uh, with this now being available, I'm hoping to make more videos for Duel Links. And uh, I did have to take a little short break just because of the Thanksgiving holiday that was occurring last week, and just being busy with work and stuff like that. But uh, hopefully we can uh, get some really good content going, and uh, it's something that I really hope you guys are looking forward to. So, with that being said, today we have a pretty fun video. We have a box opening video for Blades of Spirits, I think is what it's called. Yeah, we can go ahead and click on this here. So, if you didn't catch the memo, there is this brand new mini box here. And um, we are going to go through uh, one box opening of this box. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go through it more than once. There's a few cards in here that I want that are actually like normals and rares and things like that. Uh, so things that I want in particular, I want Sabersaurus, which you guys can see over here. Uh, it's 1900 Dinosaur Beater, so it's going to be really nice in Dino decks. Uh, like, I know that vanilla monsters aren't that common anymore, but if you think about Dino decks, if they're running things like uh, Destroyer Saurus and things like that, they're basically just vanilla monsters for purposes of that deck. Like the effect to search out for Jurassic World's not used, it's just used because it's an 1800 attack monster, which gets boosted to 2100 under Jurassic World. Um, so, now with Sabersaurus, we've got its base attack being 1900, it's now 2200 under Jurassic World, so that's pretty neat. Uh, I don't think that's like a particularly important benchmark, but you know, it's it's still like a, a it outclasses Destroyer Saurus now. So, uh, this is a card I'm really excited for. Uh, Hazy Flame Cerberus is pretty cool. So Hazy Flame Sphinx is a card trader card, and it's become a pretty popular deck just because it, uh, it's it got a really great effect, you know, being that it can't be targeted by card effects by your opponent. And then when they combo it with Beast Rising, it's you get like a, uh, you know, 3,000 attack or more monster with Hazy Flame. I think it's like, you know, if you use K9 Tor, uh, it goes up to like 3,400 or so. So you've got this this big monster that can't be targeted with card effects, so it's very hard to get over. You really need like Super Rush Headlong or Mirror Wall, and uh, those are the best ways to, to deal with it. So Cerberus uh, kind of adds some consistency to the deck. It allows you to add hazy cards from your deck to your hand, so that's mainly for uh, Sphinx. And it's also you know a good target for Sphinx's effect. Sphinx can uh, special summon fire-type monsters from the grave, so... Uh, you know, then that's really nice. You can summon Cerberus, and then you can combo with Beast Rising pretty nicely. Um, those are kind of like the two main things. There's a couple of Six Dams cards that I want. Uh, like this guy, Zanji. I think this is probably the best Six Dams card that's in here. Six Dams is, uh, you know, a really cool deck from TCG, because uh, they had the, the Synchro Monster, but uh, obviously we don't have Synchro Monsters here in, um, in Duel Links. So, until then, like, they gave us some some other cards, like, they gave us uh, Great Shogun Sheehan, and um, stuff like that. They gave us uh, Anishi, Sheehan's Chancellor, but I don't think any of these cards are any good. I think all the Six Sam's cards that are any good are these rares. Uh, so, like, Iroh, uh, if that's how you say that, you know, its uh, effect isn't that great. Like, it does allow you to destroy uh, face-down defense position monsters. Uh, after this card attacks, but you know more more importantly, it's a 1700 attack beater that gets boosted to 1900 with Field of the Warriors, and then that's kind of the same with Sanji. Sanji actually has a decent effect, but it's a it's a 2000 attack monster. So I think like a control deck with six samurais is pretty interesting. Just using cards like this and um, where's the other one? It's a water one. Um, this guy Yaichi. He can destroy sp uh, set spell and trap cards. Um, that could be potentially nice. Like, it's tricky, right, because uh, if it's like a mirror wall or something like that, they could just flip it face up, and then it's no longer set. I think that's how that works. Um, but anyway, that's not really relevant. We'll figure that all out later, and uh, we are just going to go ahead and get started with this box opening. So let's see how we do. We do have plenty of gems saved up, and we could go through this box more than once. Uh, but I'm not going to use any of my gems to do that, because I want to save them for the inevitable next box. Which will probably come out right around 
uh, Christmas. So six Samurai and Nisashi. Uh, when you control face up six Sam's monster with a different name, this card can attack twice during each battle phase. So that's pretty neat. Um, Logic of a hero. Uh, I don't think this is going to be too too competitive, uh, just because fusion decks with heroes are not good. And here's your Aichi. Yeah, so you get to destroy a set spell or trap card. And you know, uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with Six Sam's, like, they all need another Six Samurai monster to be on the field in order to get their effect. Um, so, that's one thing that I think that's really lacking, is that there's not a lot of cards. Um, you got Zanji, very good. There's not a lot of cards in uh, that they added in a set that really sort of lets you swarm the field with Six Samurais. Like, um, like uh, what is it, like Grandmaster of the Six Samurai? Like, if you could, it, it's a card in TCG. If you have another six Sams on the field, you can special summon that from your hand. Uh, Copy Nine is potentially a card that could go into six Sams. I'm not really sure, um, but basically it allows you to summon a normal monster with the same name and level as a monster that you normal summoned. So, if you summon any of your six Sams, you could play this, and then you've got two of them side by side, so they can immediately get their effects. But the problem is, it's a zero zero uh, attack point monster, so it's not very strong. Um, you know, and you can use it to defend your, um, your other six Sams as well, but I don't think it's gonna be that great. Uh, Temple of the Mind's Eye, and, uh, Sheen's Castle Miss. So, yeah, this is not another, uh, this is a, another support card, but it's not very good. Um, it makes the other monsters, uh, that attack six Sams monsters weaker, but it's just not worth it. There's a whole lot of other cards that you can play that are better, like Mirror Wall. Uh, Six Samurai, uh, Cayman? I'm not sure. Uh, targets face up spell or trap cards. Uh, but I think that's even less useful than uh, Yaichi. Uh, Hazy Glory uh, seems good in theory. You could summon Hazy Flames for, for one less tribute, but uh, I don't think it's all that uh, great. Like, you'd rather play Soul Exchange or just anything else. Like, Because, yeah, it, it allows you to summon without tributing, but it doesn't give you, like, any advantage. We got some Pegasus Eyes. Uh, Hazy Flame Manticore. To be honest, I didn't even realize that this was in the set. What does this one do once per either player's turn? So you can send one fire monster, except this card from your hand, or face up to the side of the field of the graveyard. This card cannot be destroyed by card effects. Okay, so this is a little redundant, because it already can't be targeted with card effects. So, I guess if there's something that doesn't target, like uh, Super Rush, you can protect yourself with this. But otherwise, it doesn't seem that great. Uh, Swift Strike Armor, uh, not that great. Because uh, it's it does it's just a minus one. Like, yes, I, I complained earlier that... Um, Samurais are slow right now. Uh, you need like two turns to get two monsters out in the field, uh, but this is not the answer. This card doesn't really accomplish anything. And uh, Hazy Flame Periton. I'm not sure if this is going to go in, um, but it does allow you to uh, potentially get out more Hazy Flame monsters from your deck, such as Hazy Flame Sphinx. We got Triple Karibo, but it doesn't look like it's going to end up being anything. Hero's Real Tool. Uh, three of a kind. This is kind of neat for... Um, I don't know, it could be a tricky tech in, like, a dino deck with Hydra get on. I don't know. Blindly Loyal Goblin. Uh, this is actually a pretty good card for Warriors, just because of how prevalent Econ is right now. So, that's good to know. Um, what else we got? Six Samurai Nasashi again, Hazy Glory again. This time we got a glossy version, which is cool. And New Spatian Dark Panther. Uh, they're giving us a lot of New Spatian cards, but they are not good. <laughs> uh, which is pretty unfortunate. But, um, yeah, target one face-up monster your opponent controls, the, this card's name and effects become those of that target. So, I don't know. There could be some sort of cheeky thing you could do with that. Um, Elemental Hero Neos Knight. Very cool. Um, and this one is a little bit nice. Um, like, it's not, I don't think it's good, but it's not specific, right? It requires just one warrior-type monster, as you can see there. Um, so that's pretty nice. And, um, it's... Gains attack equal to half the attack of the warrior type fusion material used for its fusion summon. So if you use this with uh, uh, Dark Blade, it gains 900 attack points, which is not bad. And um, it can attack twice, so who knows? Uh, maybe there's a way that you can make this work. Um, we don't have anything like Elemental Hero Prisma right now, so it's still not that great. Like Prisma to turn its name into Neos, and then you can fuse it with any warrior type monster, it seems like it'd be pretty great. Uh, well, I speak relatively. And uh, okay, we get Hand of the Six Samurai. So this one is actually kind of neat too because um, it's got some good on-demand monster destruction. And it's not limited to once per turn, so that's nice. It's just limited by how many um, 
normal monsters you have, or uh, not normal monsters, how many six stamps monsters you have. Uh, we got six stamps Yariza. Uh, this can attack your opponent directly if you've got a six stamps up on the field, so that's cool. Uh, this card I was a little excited for at first, Fire King Avatar Barong. Like, it's a nice 1800 uh, beater for for uh, Fire King and for Phoenix decks, but the effect is that it has just isn't uh, that great. It's pretty underwhelming. You can uh, add Fire King cards from your deck to your hand. So it could be used for consistency, for getting Fire King Island to your hand, or things like that. But usually, like, you want to get Phoenix to your hand. Like, you don't really care that much about, um, about, uh, Fire King, uh, Yaksha. But, you know, who knows. Uh, we've still yet to pull a Hollow card. And we got Hero Mask, another blindly little goblin. We also haven't pulled Sabersaurus yet. But, uh, we get five copies of that, so we'll pull it eventually. Neospatial Dark Panther. Uh, Hazy Glory, Legendary Evan Steeds, Genius Castle of Mist. Yeah, so we're not doing too hot with these pulls here. I mean, at least it's... Oh, I, I shouldn't have skipped that. But the next time we pull that one, I'll, I'll try and read it. I'm just sort of, like, looking for the hollows, you know? Um, we'll see if we can make this work. So we got Hazy Claim Cerberus, so very good. I had already shown you guys this effect. But, um, yeah, it's just a pretty decent consistency card for, for Hazy Flames. Um, you could potentially run it now just with Aroma Strategy. You don't have to run it with Destiny Draw. I guess you could run with Aroma Strategy before, but people were really concerned about Bricks with Aroma Strategy because you don't have a good way to get Hazy Flame Sphinx to your hand. Uh, six Strike Triple Impact. Uh, if you control three or more face-up six damage monsters, activate one of these effects. So, it seems good, but it's just it's tough because... Like, you're gonna have a hard time getting three six stamps monsters at the same time, because they're not that big, actually. Um, alright, we got Triple Karibo, and we got some, uh, Golden Bars, Egyptian Text. I think this might be our first Hollow. So let's see what we get. And it's Great Shogun Sheehan, so we get the Ultra Rare as our first Hollow, which is very cool. Um, you know, it's got a, a interesting summoning effect. You can special summon it if you have two six stamps monsters or more. And, um, it limits your opponent's ability to activate spells and traps. Um, so, it's okay. Not a great card. Um, I don't think it's gonna be the focus of Six Sam's decks. I think Six Sam's might be best off with running, you know, Triple Econ, Triple Mirror Wall, Triple Floodgate, things like that. Uh, we got Cyber Harpy Lady, which is pretty cool. Uh, people are excited about Harpies potentially making a comeback. I don't think it's really gonna happen. Uh, just because they don't have any big boss monsters to contend with. Uh, red Eye Zombie Dragon... Uh, Dakini, anything like that. And, um, the back row removal is great, but, um, they don't have any monster removal. So we get, uh, Triple Karibo, and we got the Rainbow Bars. Let's, uh, let's open this up. We got those Pegasus eyes. Let's see. We got the Immortal Bushi. So this one, it's, uh, kind of like Treeborn Frog for Warriors. So, could be cool. Uh, have, probably have some dedicated decks, but I don't know how competitive any of them are going to be. Alright, so we've got back-to-back. -back. We got the BAM on the screen. Uh, this is gonna be Gyoku. Yes! Alright, it is Gyoku. This card's actually pretty neat. Um, because it prevents, you know, it locks down an opponent's back row. And, um, I think it's it's pretty nice. Um, alright, what do we got next? Uh, Blind Little Goblin. So we got three pulls now. Oh, we got Giant Karibo. Here we go. What do we got? Uh, just the blue bars, though. I don't know, sometimes these are trolls. We'll have to see. No, it is a Nishi, Sheehan's count, uh, Chancellor, so pretty cool. This one's got almost like a chaos summoning effect. You can banish six Sams from your graveyard to summon it. Um, and then you can destroy face-up monsters uh, with it. So that that's actually pretty decent. I don't even mind that you can't attack with it. I can I can live with that. Okay, we got a Super Karibo again. We're, 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 we finally are hitting our stride, guys. We're getting all these great pulls now. And, uh, okay, never mind, it was a troll. <laughs> I, I don't know why they do that. Like, they should, and they do it again. This is gonna end up being a rare. Um, which is just frustrating. Got another Cypher Harpy Lady, very cool. I know my buddy Greg, it's Gregulator, is really wanting me to make another Cyber Harpy. Or not Cyber Harpy, but make, make another Harpy deck. I did do a Harpy video. Hey, we got our first copy of Saber Sword, it's very cool. This normally gentle dinosaur enjoys relaxing in its nest in the prairies. If it becomes angers, it turns terribly ferocious, so very cool. But um, anyway, as I was saying, uh, Greg really wants me to make another Harpy deck, um, but to do that I've got to have to go into this box a couple more times because um, I do need to get Harpy Dancer, and because uh, that's a pretty useful card. 
uh, for for a new for a uh, modernized uh, harpy deck. But I don't think it's worth spending the gems just to get a uh, uh, harpy dancer. So now we're doing okay. So we've got uh, three super rares and one ultra rare pulled. So we've got five supers and one ultra rare left as well. I am excited for Neos Alias. This is pretty cool. This uh, maybe this will be the card that you see in um, in most Neos decks now because it's a little like <clears throat> you know it's a Gemini monster, so you have to normal summon it twice. But that's still easier than trying to uh, get out a Neos because uh, with Neos you obviously have to tribute summon or find some other way to get it out. So. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's uh, let's finish up through this box. We've got 50 packs to go. You know, you, usually when I'm on my phone, I can do this a little bit better. And then I'm also, when I was doing it on my phone, I'm not staring at the webcam. Um, and I'm just kind of like going through and not even looking at the cards. Um, but I want to find that one E-Hero fusion and uh, talk about it. Sheen's Foot Soldier is, uh, I don't know, it, it's, it's a, it seems like a neat card. Because it's, it's like a floater, you could say. It summons a 6 Sam's monster when it's destroyed by battle. Which is not that great on its own. You know, it's uh, if it gets destroyed by um, Super Rush or something like that, it doesn't get its effect. And there's also just not that many 6 Sam's monsters that I would want to summon from the deck with Sheen's Foot Soldier. Like, you've got the Yaichi, I guess. Uh, which is the one that destroys the set spell and trap cards. But otherwise, it's just not that great. you got a 6 Samurai Iro, Very cool. So yeah, I don't, I don't know, like, I'm excited for some of these cards, but this box is just not that competitive. Um, I don't think there's been a box this bad since, um, since the Beast one. What was that, Land of the Titans? Oh, here, 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 here Dark Neos, we got this one. So this is with, uh, Dark Panther. Um, if this card is not already targeting a monster with its effect, you can target one face-up monster on the field when, while you control this face-up card, that target's effect on the field is negated. Okay, cool. So, you can um, negate effect monsters, uh, which is pretty neat. Um, but unfortunately, it goes back to your extra check in the end phase, so that part's not great. Got some blue borders and some Pegasus eyes. Let's see what we got. We do get Harpy Dancer. Very cool. It's hard to tell sometimes uh, if those are going to be real pulls or not. But uh, Harpy Dancer, it's uh, got the ability to send Wind Monster back to your hand, and then you can normal summon an additional Wind Monster. So, it gives you the ability to... Uh, you know, double summon uh, Harpy Lady to get two back row destructions, which is pretty nice. But yeah, like I said, without some sort of uh, monster removal or some sort of boss monster to attack over, you know, Dakini, Black Dragon Ninja, Red Eye Zombie Dragon, uh, things like that, uh, I still don't think Harpies are going to be competitive. Which is too bad. You know, a lot of people really like Harpies. And they've got a lot of good cards in the TCG, uh, like, uh, what's the, Harpy, uh, like, Chandelier is what it's called. That one is, uh, it works nicely with Harpy's Pet Dragon, but at least with, uh, with that, you would use it to exceed summon for Big Eye or for, um, Mecha Phantom Beast, Drake of Sack, or things like that. So it might be a little while before Harpies make their comeback. We'll have to see. Uh, we're getting a bunch of repeats now, so this is good, because now it allows us to go through a little bit more quickly. We got another Hasty Flame Periton. At least if they give you the colors, it ought to be for a glossy card or something like that, you know? But yeah, I really think this is the worst, uh, pack since the, the Beast pack. I've been playing this game for, like, five months now, and I still haven't, uh, opened a single pack from the Beast pack. And there's a few others that are bad. Um... What are, what are some of the other bad ones? Chaotic Compliance is pretty bad. Um, <clears throat> the Echoes of Silence, that one's not great, but at least it gives you, like, level up cards. Level up cards are decent for Horus and things like that. And uh, Silent Magician's not bad on its own. Um, the Galactic Origin that we just pulled is actually pretty good because it has Glads. But otherwise, like, none of the Ultra Rares were really that good. You had like Berserk Dragon and Triforce Ops. They're all pretty worthless. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Like, it's it's a catch-22 a little bit, I think. Like, they can release uh, boxes that have uh, more competitive archetypes. And we'll come back to this thought in a second, because we uh, definitely have a hollow here. And this is looking like the Super Tyranno. No, it's Neos Alias. Very cool. Yeah, this, um, you know, everyone's talking about how Neos Alias 
uh, is not nearly as good without Gemini Spark. So who knows, maybe they'll give us Gemini Spark in the future. And it uh, looks like we're getting back-to-back -back Hollows. What's this one going to be? Um, this one is looking like the t sorry, Tyranno, Superconductor Tyranno. Uh, this card I don't think is going to be very good at all. Yes, it's got a great attack, but you have to tribute twice for it. Not worth it. Um, but what I was saying, yeah, so, like, people will complain if they release bad boxes. But then when, uh, you know, if they put if they put out a main box and it's got a bunch of good cards in it, uh, you know, like it's top tier cards, um, they're gonna people are gonna complain, especially if one of the cards is an ultra rare. So take for example, Kazuki. You know, Kazuki is a uh, mandatory card for zombies, and you have to have like, it's an ultra rare. It's hard to get three copies of it. Um, I was really lucky that I was starting the game right when uh, Crimson Kingdom came out, and so I got all those gems from leveling up and was able to actually get the three Kazuki. But, you know, it was, you know, I get a Kazuki, I reset the pack immediately. Um, and I was able to get the Wyverns that I needed, Red Eye Zombie, and everything like that. Um, we got Tiki Curse. These trap monsters are, are neat, but uh, we'll have to see. I haven't bought any Tiki Souls from the card trader. Maybe I should think about doing that. Just because with this card, uh, Tiki Curse here, and uh, Tiki Soul, and uh, Embodiment, uh, those are all trap monsters. And it could make for a fun deck, who knows. Uh, but anyway, what I'm saying is that, you know, if there's a pack that's got a, a top-tier deck in it, but one of the cards is an Ultra, people are going to get so mad because it's like, oh, well, how am I supposed to play this deck now? I have to buy all the packs. So, you know, it's a tough situation to be in. Um, Konami's done a good job of, you know, making Cyber Angels, uh, you know, that's obviously the number one deck. That's fairly close to free-to-play. Like, obviously, you need... Um, Sonic Birds and uh, Senjus, which are ultra rares from two different packs. So, like, you could say, like, CJ, you don't know what you're talking about. It's nowhere near free to play. But the thing is, is that, like, yes, obviously those cards are great, but there are alternatives. And uh, we got Parallel Twister. People are hyped about this card with uh, the whatever that Rebirth card is, but uh, unfortunately, this is a normal spell card. It's not a quick play, so it's not going to be as good. Um,. But, you know, the idea of comboing this with uh, face-up spell and traps that you don't need anymore is pretty neat. Uh, so we'll see. But, um, you know, you can run the... You've got Double Cyber Petite. You can run Skullangle as a, as a decent alternative. Um, you know, if you really need, you can run Crystal Seer and things like that. Like, there's ways to play the deck without being screwed. Um, and do we even need to buy any more packs? I don't think we do. Um, we just, I guess, this uh, powerful rebirth we need. Let's go through it. This is going to be obnoxious, but we're going to go through it one by one until we get powerful rebirth. Because there's no point in buying every pack. Because um, I'm not going through it a second time. Um, you know, maybe I'll get some of the sales and stuff, but uh, I'm not interested in uh, getting every single common and normal. I don't, I don't need it. Um, but yeah, I think I have all the cards that I want now, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, so yeah, back to what I was saying, you know, it's, it's a catch-22 for Konami. They want to release boxes that people are excited for, but then, you know, people are inevitably going to complain when there is a box with a mandatory card like Kazuki. And, um, and the, you know, it's hard to get, so it's hard to build that deck. So, um, I think this is Powerful Rebirth. I think we're in business. There we go, Powerful Rebirth. This is the power creep on Birthright and Soul Resurrection and things like that. Uh, granted, it only targets uh, level 4 or lower, but you can now use Effect Monsters, so it's pretty nice. Um, maybe in the next set, they'll give us Call of the Haunted. I think this is what they're gearing up for. So, that is pretty neat. Uh, so yeah, six packs left. We still have over 6,000 gems, so that's great. We can put those towards the next main box, which I'm sure will come out around Christmas. Um, so when that does come out, you can expect another box opening from me. And between now and then, there's a whole lot of decks that I want to do. Um, I do want to do Six Sams and Hazy Flames uh, from this box. Uh, you know, I've been talking about it all episode. And um, there's also some other decks I'd like to, to bring out, like um, like uh, Magnet Warriors. I'm really excited for Magnet Warriors. I want to do uh, like a legit uh, Gemini deck. Like the one that has the cards from Bastion, the Chemicrator cards, and things like that. 
Um, I kind of want to use a burn deck uh, in a video. Burn, I think, is really interesting. I know a lot of people hate it, and because uh, it's not very interactive. But I don't know. The Amazonas Swordswoman deck is pretty cool. Um, you have to play it. Like, your opponent does have to make some good decisions so that they don't lose to it. Um, so I don't think it's that cancerous. It's not like it's the extra extra mill or anything like that that's super boring. Um, but, yeah, so we'll try and get this coming out. Maybe we'll do two videos a week. Uh, we'll do our best to make that happen. But, uh, yeah, I do hope you guys enjoyed watching. And if you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And uh, if you want to see more content like this or other gaming content, Pokemon content, anything like that, make sure you drop a sub. And uh, that'll be it for me. Until the next time, I'll see you guys later.